Hi, I'm Frank Marino, and this is Jake Out Loud. Well, one of your quotes, this quote was taken from Guitar World in 2015, and you you quoted here saying, For me, playing music has always been about having fun with my friends. Beyond that, it's not that important. The self-importance of rock and rollers, and particularly guitar players, I mean, we're not curing cancer. We're not saving the world. What are we doing? We're a bunch of guys who play instruments and who are actually getting money to do it. That's unbelievable. And I do it for free. Yeah. And that's absolutely true. I stand yeah. completely by that. You still statement. stand by that. Oh, yes. 100%. Yeah. And that's something I've been saying since the 70s. Yeah. So it's not just that I said it now. We are doing something that we would all do for free. In fact... Yeah. The proof is we did it for free in the beginning. That's right. Okay, yeah. that's, and so did everybody else, unless yeah. they tell you they didn't, in which case they're lying. Yeah. Okay, so I've just held on to that excitement of it, mm-hmm. and and unless you continue to play it for fun with your friends, yeah, it's very easy to forget that that was was what it was about. Did that come around and haunt you within the business? <clears throat> Well, that attitude, that which I attitude, think is fantastic, by the way. That attitude did not endear me to those of the business minds who wanted to turn profits. Right. Uh, I, I was, you know, declared hard to work with. Um, right. Look, I really don't care, I, and I and I don't mean to say I don't care as if those people are not important. I don't mean yeah, yeah. that I don't care like they're lower than me. Mm-hmm. I mean it doesn't really affect me. I've never made any money in the music business, and mm-hmm. I'm happy I haven't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that's the good portion. I think that with my character and my analytical brain, had I had oodles of money, I might have been a right bastard. Okay? <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's God's uh, yeah. blessing to me to keep me away from that which might have corrupted me very much. Now, you had the op- <laughs> you excelled in the 70s. Uh, as a musician, and you had the opportunity. Oh, tons! And you turned them down. Well, look, they put or me in, chose another. Uh, direction. They put Correct. me in front of a lot of people. Let's face right. it, okay. And it was just luck, okay. Uh-huh. Come on, I mean, there's probably a hundred other guys that could have had the deal I had, or yeah, could yeah. have had the manager I had, and the thousands of other guys. Right. It just happened to be me, and I got lucky. Um, and some people say, oh, you sell yourself short and blah, blah, blah. I've heard that. You know, people tell oh, sure, me that. But maybe sure. I'm not selling myself so short. I mean, really, let's think about this for a second. If you go to the average rock and roll concert of those days. Okay. Remember in those days, the average concert was 18,000 people. Okay. Right. 18 to 20,000. At least that's what we were doing every day yeah. on somebody's show, either opening or, or headlining. Right. And the bigger ones were 60,000 people or 100,000 people. And the smaller ones were like... 8,000 people. Now, in any of those venues, let's say I take you in a time machine back right. to those days and we walk into a 20,000 seat venue watching Band X, okay, whoever that band may be. Yeah. With the ex- single exception of the very few generational talents in our business, and they can be counted on two hands, mm-hmm. okay, generational. How many times would a band be playing in one of those settings that you couldn't pick at least 10 or 20 people from the audience who could come up and sub for one of the guys in the band? Okay. At last moment. Yeah. All of a sudden the bass player got sick or whatever. You could conceivably find someone in the audience. Find someone in the audience who knows the stuff because he's there. And he's a fan. And he's a fan. And he could play it and it would be exactly right. So is it really about the musicians? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, there are certain generational talents that are irreplaceable. You're yeah. not going to ha- go to a Doors concert and all of a sudden get someone to p- take Jim Morrison's place. Yeah. Nor are you going to take Jimi Hendrix's place. But you might take Noel Redding's place yeah. on that stage. You might even take Mitch Mitchell's place if there's a bunch of jazz drummers in the audience that happen to know the songs. hmm you're not going to take Billy Joel's place. He's generational talent. But everybody else in his band is probably going to be able to be replaced, and not just by musicians, but by pretty much someone from the audience of 20,000 people. Yeah. 
So the question really becomes, how important are we? We're just lucky. We're very yeah. lucky to be the guy that's on the stage. <laughs> okay? Because we're yeah. very replaceable. Most of us are yeah. very replaceable. And although some people would argue that I'm not, because I'm the guy who's leading the band and doing the solos yeah. and all that stuff, maybe I'm less likely to be replaced, but I'm not irreplaceable. Somebody out there yeah. can come up and do my tracks. Exactly. You know? So, I, I just see it that way. And it yeah. keeps me real, nor real normal. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm having fun with my friends and people have paid to see it. And I owe it to my to the people that have paid to, to put my best foot forward for them, just like I'd want a hockey player to do his best work yeah. in a game and not slack off. Yeah. I owe it to put my best foot forward, but I also owe it to my musicians to enjoy doing it while we do it, because yeah. that's why we do it. Well, because that translates into the audience. Yes. If they see you having fun, they, they love, feel yeah, that. That's right. Going to you're, yes, you're, you're basically asking them to come to your yes. homecoming party. You yeah. Yeah. And you're saying, everybody have a good time. It's like inviting people to your wedding. Yeah. You know, and, and oftentimes, you know, you're having a wedding and there's a large wedding, let's say, that someone has with hundreds of people. And the bride and groom walk around from table to table saying, how's everything? Do you feel okay? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like you make everybody feel like they're part of what yeah. you're doing. And I think that's the way that musicians should interact with their audiences. Unfortunately... Yeah. I can tell you from experience and having known 99% of the famous musicians in the world and working with many, a huge majority of them do not look at it the same way I do. Yeah. I'm just sorry to say it, but they don't. Yeah. They look at their group and themselves as being a little more special. And if you don't believe me, at least they used to look at it that way in those days. If you don't believe me, just see how hard it was to even get them to look at you if they left their limousine and went into the place and, or left their place and went into the limousine. Yeah. You know, to not even acknowledge people and, you know, to let the roadies carry their suitcases. Right. It's just, there's a certain hubris that was developed among most of the musicians who were, and you know what? I can understand it. They've got 20,000 people a night bowing down to them like they're gods. Yeah. Sooner or later, they begin to believe the press clippings. Exactly unless they ground themselves. And now that most of them have come down a peg, and I think most of them have, even the biggest bands in the world have come down a peg, used to do yeah. 20,000 seats, are lucky enough they do 1,000 or two. Yeah. What do they do? They do meet and greets. Something you could have never got them to do in their heyday. That's right. Now they're all willing to meet the fans and sign the, to say how much they're, you know, the love that they came to the show and thank you and all that stuff. They're all doing the meet and greets. Yeah. It's sort of like Comic Con or something. It's sort of like. It's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's sort of like, hey, there's Batman and Robin, and if we go give them five bucks, we'll get the autograph. Yeah. You know? And I think that's sad. Yeah. I think that's sad because these people have had to change their view of themselves in order to. They, they look at it as having come down. Yeah. But I'm still the same guy I ever was, and I don't care if there's 20,000 people or 20 people. It doesn't matter. I haven't changed my view That's of myself. Right. No, all. You told you would finish the show, you'd go in the <clears> audience. <throat> Not just finish. I mean, I'd be out there before, I'd be out there between yeah. groups. Uh, and after shows, even now, anyone who comes to one of our concerts okay. will tell you that very rarely have we done a kind of meet and greet where we're sitting at a table and people are let in two at a time as if they're going to visit Santa Claus. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> this is just stupid. Okay? This is insane. Yeah. And when I've had to do that on occasion, certain yeah. bands I've been lexing playing on other shows that they've yeah. forced us to do it that way. Yeah. I'm like telling the guys in the, in the other bands, what are we doing? This is like Santa Claus. You know? Like, it's yeah. ridiculous. All we have to do is just talk to these people. Like, they're not going to gonna do anything dumb to us. I mean, yeah. they're, they're all smiling. We're all happy. Yeah, yes. everybody's happy. Like, just go. So what I do now has been sort of a staple. What I've always done, really, since I got into the smaller places where it was easier to do it. Yeah. Um, is at the end of the show, I'm usually the last guy to ever leave the place. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I'm going to hang around and anybody could come and talk and have a coffee. Some, we even sometimes go to Denny's and have a burger with, like, whoever's there. Yeah. You know, because what is... What is the whole point of trying to make people believe that you're some kind of 
you know, God. What is the point of that? It's not true. That's right. And they'll realize and Of that. course they'll realize that. That's like ridiculous. And that's what <clears throat> the sod never meets your <clears throat> hero, right? Yeah. So, you know, I just won't do that. I never did yeah. it. Yeah. I never liked it. I never liked it when I saw others do it. Yeah. And I never wanted to get in and out of a limousine because I always thought somebody in the crowd is going to be saying, look at that idiot. Yeah. Well, oh, what an idiot. What, an, what an asshole. You know, I, somebody would be saying that. And I didn't want to be that guy. No, and I've heard, and I've been in a different side of the business here, but I've been to those concerts, you invited back. And what I've noticed exactly what you said, the people coming out just after meeting someone like you or anyone else for that matter, the fact that they see that you're grounded and, you know, and just a regular guy having fun, they're going, they're much more impressed. Yeah, but you know what? You know what's even harder? What? You're right. That happens. Yeah. And they'll actually say how they're impressed about that. Yeah. And that's the hardest part because that's when the rubber meets the road. That's when you have to show them that you're not just trying to act like you're yeah, yeah. some kind of virtue signal that you're such a normal down to earth guy. Yeah. You have to sort of deflect that. You can't allow them to keep on telling you stuff like that because yeah, yeah. if they are, they're still glorifying you. True. In a sense. True. So you have to knock that shit off. And I do that with comedy. Oh, okay. I use comedy. I make jokes. I talk it something I understand. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I, I let them joke. Yeah. You know, and I make jokes. And sooner or later, it doesn't take long. Five minutes, ten minutes, and sooner or later, they're actually saying, well, I got to go now. Okay, see you tomorrow. That yeah. kind of, that's what I'm striving for. I'm striving yeah. for that type of relationship with people where you can you can see them and really remember them the next time you come to the town. Yeah. Okay. You know, the one thing I I would not want to happen is to show up in some city where a guy I had had that conversation with comes up to see me again and I don't remember. For me, that would be awful because I would think, oh my God, he might, what's he going to think? Like, and if he's with friends and I don't remember him now, he's going to feel embarrassed. So I don't want to put him through that. Right. So I really want to make sure that when I meet people, I remember them and I know them and I know their names and I even speak with them after the concert, like meaning email or sure, yeah, website contact, or whatever. Yeah. I try to sort of keep in a contact so that yeah. when I meet them again, they really are people. It's yeah. not just people so that they'll buy my records. Yeah. And really, believe me, I never sold a lot of records that I got paid for. I sold a lot of records, but I didn't get paid. Yeah. So it doesn't matter to me whether they buy my records. Yeah. I tell the downloaders, or I used to tell the downloaders this, the artist whose record you're downloading, he gets, or the band gets, at maximum, at maximum, two bucks. You might have paid 20 cent, twenty bucks for that CD, or 15 or 12. At maximum, the, band, <clears throat> the band's getting two dollars. But most of the time, the record company's not giving it to them. They're taking that $2 too. Yeah. So I say, by all means, go out, download your favorite artists as much as you can, and just send the artist $2. Cut out all those middlemen. guys. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, 99% of the time, the artist is not getting his $2. Yeah. That's not going to him. You think it's going to him. It only goes to him in the case of the richest and most famous. Yeah. You know, the, the Taylor Swifts and the big, big ones. They yeah. get their royalty. But all those other bands you go see, they don't get it. They don't get it. They get robbed. Yeah. So give them the $2. Don't buy the records from the record labels. Don't buy the records from iTunes or these people and it's even worse on the downloads because you're paying your buck for the download that artist's getting nothing that's right okay like they say they are they're getting nothing and they can't even tell how many there were the record companies are making more money off artists because of downloads than they ever were off of hard sales because with hard sales you could always say well I'm gonna go find out how many you pressed yeah you know at the pressing plant not so with the computer so by all means, download their stuff, screw the middleman, and send that artist that you want to support two bucks in the mail.
Yeah. Even if it's anonymous. Yeah. 